start off today by opening our Bibles and turn to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. The name of this teaching is the Day of the Sheep. Bah. Anybody say bah? Was this bleeding of sheep I hear, huh? Matthew 25, and let's just read it from the screen up here. And you'll be in verse 31 through 46. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and in his, I'm sorry, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Verse 32. The people of all nations will be brought before him, and he will separate them as shepherds separate their sheep from their goats. He will place the sheep on his right and his goats, or the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, My father has blessed you. Come and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world was created. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And when I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. When I was sick, you took care of me. And when I was in jail, you visited me. Then the ones who please the Lord will ask, When did we give you something to eat and to drink? When did we welcome you as a stranger or give you clothes to wear? Or visit you while you were sick or in jail. Verse 40. The king will answer, Whenever you did it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. Verse 41. Then the king will say to those on his left, Get away from me. You are under God's curse. Go into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That should be a little hint to those who wonder why hell's there. It was not prepared for us. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 42, I was hungry, but you did not give me anything to eat. And I was thirsty, but you did not give me anything to drink. And I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. And I was naked, but you did not give me any clothes to wear. I was sick and in jail, but you did not take care of me. Then the people will ask, Lord, when did we fail to help you when you were hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in jail? The king will say to them, whenever you failed to help any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you failed to do it for me. Then Jesus said, those people will be punished forever, but the ones who pleased God will have eternal life. And the King James says, and those shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life. And Rick, you can show that next picture there. The latter part of those verses talks about giving, being there when someone has a need. And there was a, I guess it was about, I don't know, maybe a month ago or so, um, one of our members here was very ill. And they had to get out of the sanctuary, and they still sat in the ladies' classroom so they could still hear. And I just happened to be walking back there to use the restroom, and I said, wow, you know, what's going on? And they said, you know, they weren't feeling well. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, I hope you feel better. And then I went to walk away. And I thought, wait a minute, what is going on? Get yourself back in there and pray for them. I just immediately went back in there, laid hands on them, prayed for them, and that just rang true when I was reading these scriptures just now that was brought back to my remembrance how many times do we as believers as Christians see a need or someone comes to us and says oh you know I don't know what I'm going to do about my electric bill I don't know what I'm going to do to feed my children I just lost everything in a fire I have nothing for Christmas and we say oh man I'll be praying for you and then we leave and don't do something anything pray for them right now or if you have extra funds that you can bless them even if you don't have extra funds what about the sacrificial giving that takes place I mean under our trees we have gifts piled up to the hilt and then there's people in an apartment complex just down the road that has zero nothing everything they bought for Christmas was in the fire 
these are things as Christians, and when we're interacting with people, people are strategically placed in our paths for a reason. How many of you believe in coincidence? Don't raise your hand. Coincidence in my, this is me, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe things happen for a reason. I believe my God is bigger and he knows what's going on and he allows certain things to take place for his glory. Even in scripture, there was someone who was, was ill and he said, this person is this way because it's for me, to, to the glory of the Father. Not because I wanted to inflict pain on this person, but it's for the glory of the Lord. Now, you have a picture up here. Can you tell the difference which one of these are sheep and which ones of these are goats? It's kind of hard to tell. And in that verse that we read, in verse Matthew, or Matthew 25, verse 32, it said, the people of all nations will be brought before him, the Son of Man, and as shepherds separate their sheep from the goat, that's how he's going to separate them. Now, if you're just a, a person who's not a shepherd and you've never really been in this kind of a situation, you might have a hard time figuring out which ones are what because they really look alike. But this is a mixture of sheep and goats. Number one, the sheep and the goats were all in the same pasture. That is a key. The way that shepherds separate their flocks if they're intermingled, say Pastor Bob's a shepherd and Charles is a shepherd, they would stand on each end of the field and they would start calling their sheep, hello, or whatever that they normally would do. You know, Charles might yodel, you know, and get his sheep to come to his side. They would hear their voice and go respectfully to their shepherd. They would easily separate. In John 10, this next screen here says John 10, 27. Most of the scriptures I'm using today is the contemporary English version. I go back and forth, as you guys know. I use Amplified. I use all kinds of versions. But this particular um, service, I've got the contemporary English version. My sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life so that they will never be lost no one can snatch them out of my hand. You know you are a sheep if you know the voice of God and you obey it. I'm going to say that again for anyone who wasn't listening. You know you are a sheep of God if you hear his voice, you know it's his voice, and you obey what he says. You know you're a goat when you don't listen and you run off in your own little way to do what you feel you need to do. It's just a fact of life. Like Pastor Bob said, we just say it like it is. On the next screen, we have a picture of a goat and a sheep. You want to just pet their head, right? No. All I know is I don't like goats. I have family who are in Greens, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and I went to visit their farm years ago with their goats. And I will never forget it. The goats butt up against you. If you don't touch them in just the right way they want to be touched, they will butt up against you to get your attention. They will step on you. They are rude. They are rude. And they're freaky little eyes, man. I just, I'm sorry. They freak me out. I can't handle it. Whoa. But... You know, I thought it would be kind of fun to ask a couple of the kids what they thought about sheep and goats just off the cuff, and I've got two people to tattle on, right? Where's Jonathan? He's not even in here. He knew, oh, he's in there. I said, Jonathan, what's the difference between sheep and goats? He says, sheep don't have any horns. Goats do. And sheep have more fur. Wool, actually, spoken by Jonathan. At the goats... Male and female a lot of times will have horns. The sheep, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Now, Miranda, on the other hand, she says, don't goats have like bigger mouths? Goats are more like mountainous creatures and sheep are in pastures. I really don't know a lot about goats or sheep, really. <laughs> so 
we all have our own view of in the natural what goats and sheep are like. And because, you know, in the scripture, it's being, um, you know, you first study in the natural and then you apply it spiritually. You have to understand what you're reading first before you can ask the Holy Spirit to breathe life on it, to really get an understanding of the scripture. So what did I do? I went and studied scripture on goats. Before we go into all the details of the differences between them, let's see, let's go to the next screen. Let's see where I have it in here. Non-shepherds find it difficult to distinguish such sheep and goats, but the shepherd knows the difference and easily separates them. For example, there are differences in behavior. Sheep tend to follow. Goats go on their own way. There's a scripture. Um, it says, at the judgment, the great shepherd will know the difference and will separate those who followed him from those who went their own way. These are Christians, folks. The, they're in the same pasture, those who followed him and those who went their own way. In Matthew 10, verse 37, it says, If you love your father or mother or even your sons and daughters more than me, you're not fit to be my disciples. And unless you are willing to take up your cross and come with me, you are not fit to be my disciples. If you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you give it up to me, you surely will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet just because that person is a prophet will be given the same reward as a prophet. Anyone who welcomes a good person just because that person is good will be given the same reward as a good person. And if anyone who gives one of my most humble followers a cup of cool water Thank you for whoever got the water up here. Just because that person is my follower, I will surely be rewarded. They will surely be rewarded. It's very important to understand scripture. And so many times we go through and we'll just read it and say, oh, well, that was really nice. And sometimes you really do just need to sit down and just read to read to get the full picture. But there are some times you have to sit and study to show yourself approved. Now, our young people, they learn how to study. Sometimes they're taking notes in class, and that's the only thing they get for their test is what they write down on that paper. Some of them, they're handed worksheets to do that helps provoke them to go through their chapters to get the information they need. You are always learning. If we just come to church to learn that one-hour lesson for the rest of our hundreds of hours we have during the week, we might not grow as fast. And some of us have been praying, Lord, I want to grow in you. I want to know you more. I want to, to move from where I am into a deeper walk with you. Well, that takes action on our part. We need to go closer to the shepherd. It's our choice. As we draw closer to him, he will draw nigh to us. Amen? So based on that scripture that we read originally about how the shepherd is going to separate the sheep from the goats, we need to decide, are we a sheep or are we a goat? So let's just look at some of the characteristics of goats. I don't like goats. They're ruminants. They chew the cud. That means they have four areas in their stomach to digest their food. So to really gross you out, they swallow it. It goes into the first chamber. Bacteria starts eating it. It comes back up. They chew it all over again. Lovely. Swallow it again. And this is a process that they go through. Throughout the day, they're eating and they're doing this with their stomach. Goats have horizontal slanted eyes. I can't stand that look. But it helps them with perception. They have, better, they have a better depth perception than sheep do. Both male and female goats have beards, or if they're really cool, they have two beards called wattles on both sides of their chin, one dangling from each side of their neck. Goats are reputed to be willing to eat almost anything, including tin cans and cardboard boxes. They've been used by humans to clear unwanted vegetation for centuries. They have been described as eating machines, biological control agents. They will eat everything. That, I'm telling you, my cousin's yard was dirt, practically. I mean, it was just eaten up. 
I got some of the older folks in here shaking their heads. You know what I'm talking about, and things are nasty. Anyway, they are constantly looking for what they can have next. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Oh, there's a tin can. Oh, wait, I can't chew that. And they move on. They just are looking. They're constantly seeking for food. They want food. They want to grow. They want to be something. All right, let's move on. Aside from sampling many things, goats are quite particular in what they actually consume. They like to chew on a lot, but let's see what they consume. Particular to what they actually consume. Preferring to browse on the tips of woody shrubs and trees, as well as the occasional broadleaf plant. Whereas sheep like to graze on the ground, they'll get up on their legs and reach way up on the tops of trees. Goats are extremely curious and intelligent. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. I work with youth. You cannot be fake with youth. If there happens to be a person who's unsaved in the youth group who might have some of these traits of really just grasping and not really knowing who they are, you got to be real. You got to lay it out the way it is. You got to be open. You have to be approachable for them to want to, to be able to, to communicate at all. So that's just a little sidebar there. You know, they're extremely curious and very intelligent. They are also known for escaping their pens. Now, I'm not talking about all the teenagers being, you know, goats, so don't you start bringing this back up in class. They like to escape pens. Goats do. If any of the fencing can be spread, pushed over or down, or otherwise be overcome, the goats will escape. Due to their high intelligence, once they have discovered a weakness in the fence, they're going to exploit it repeatedly. All right, let's go to the next screen. You got a little bit of a picture of how these goats are? They're very coordinated and can climb and hold their balance in the most precarious places. Tips, trying to climb up on that rock. Imagine that, how agile they are. Next screen, when handled as a group, goats tend to display less clumping behavior like the sheep do. But when grazing undisturbed, they just spread out all over the field or the range rather than feed side by side like sheep do. They're, they're more independent. They just want their space, so they just spread out all over the place. All right, kind of look like cows, but those are uh, goats. All right, its horns can be used instead of sheep horn to make a shafar. Now, we know Frank's got his little honky honky horn up there, but he's also got a shafar, and I want to say that one's out of a ram's horn. How long is it? You want to hold it up? Let everyone turn around and look at Mr. Frank. That right there, I, ch I believe that is off of a sheep based on the pictures I've researched. This one, the shorter, fatter on the end, this is a ram's horn. Now, that tells you something because the Jews are okay with using goat horns. You know, sheep and goats are both kosher, which means they can be eaten. So the Jews don't just look at them and say, oh, goats, ugh, because remember, they're a part of the flock. They're in the same pasture. They all graze together, but look at the distinction. Let's move on. We, we see here that you can eat them. Let's look at sheep, and this will all start making sense here in a minute. Sheep are also ruminants. They like to chew the cud. And you see them out there. Sorry, I don't want to make anyone throw up, but yeah. Let's move on. Mature sheep have 32 teeth. Who else has 32 teeth? We do. And guess what? Goats have 32 teeth as well. For the first few years of life, it is possible to calculate the age of sheep from their front teeth as a pair of milk teeth is replaced by larger adult teeth each year. The full set of eight adult front teeth being complete at about four years of age. They literally call their front teeth milk teeth. They come out each year and are replaced by the adult teeth. Eight adult teeth. You know what eight is? The number four? New beginnings. So those milk teeth are gone 
They have a full set of adult teeth. Look at the scripture in 1 Peter 2, 2. As a newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Also, in Romans 12, it talks about leaving, not Romans, Hebrews, Hebrews 12, somewhere in there, talks about to crave not only the pure work, milk, but to move beyond that, beyond the milk to the meat. Not just stay where you are, but move forward and lay foundations in your life. Sheep have good hearing and are sensitive to noise when being handled. They have very good hearing, and that's a, that's a, a huge key. Sheep also have visual fields or panoramic vision all the way around. They can see everything like behind them as well. Now, when their heads are down, you know, they're not seeing a whole lot. They have to lift their heads up because they can't see there. But they can see behind them without turning their heads. So don't think you're going to be sneaking up on a sheep anytime soon. Sheep have poor depth perception. That's interesting. Shadows and dips in the ground may cause sheep to balk or, or shake or move or stumble. In general, sheep have a tendency to move out of the dark and into well-lit areas. These are facts about sheep. Now, no wonder they use this as an example because we as Christians are to be craving the light not the darkness, and sheep will do that. Job thirty-three twenty-eight. he redeemed my soul from going down to the pit, and I will live to enjoy the light. We are to crave the good, crave the light, crave God. And the fact that sheep don't have as good of a depth perception, they'll just walk right into anything if, you, if you're not careful. Part of the reason is because they're all clumped together and they're just kind of going with whatever the other people are doing. So they just walk up, you know, in holes and everything else because everyone else is doing that. Sheep prefer to move uphill when disturbed. When we as Christians are disturbed, there's only one way to go, and that's up. Seek the Lord. Get by yourself with him. Let him speak to your heart and help clear out any of that, that discouragement, any of that rejection, fear, doubt, anything that's, that's vexing you, that disturbs you. The longer we wait down here and just go about our everyday lives, the longer we're going to carry it. But the quicker we yield to the Holy Spirit and get alone with God in that place, the quicker it'll go. You know how long those disturbing moments last? As long as it takes us to yield. I can go down this road right here and I see the yield sign. One thing drives me nuts, I've said it before, someone's going to stop. It says yield. It's not a stop sign. If you see someone coming, yeah, you better stop, but it's a yield sign. Slow down and keep on moving. You have a disturbed area in your heart, slow down, get with the Lord, and keep on moving. Don't let it stutter you to the point of not functioning in the body. Sheep also have an excellent sense of smell. It has to do with discernment. All right. Our next one. Sheep are exclusively herbivorous mammals. Hey, I said it. Most breeds prefer to graze on grass and other short rummage, avoiding the taller, woodier parts of the plants that goats readily consume. They feed from dawn until dusk, stopping sporadically to rest and chew their cud. This has to do with meditating on the Word of God. When you're meditating on the Word of God, the best thing, and I want to encourage everyone, if you don't take time in the morning to read scripture, if you don't take time to pray before you race out to school or you go to work, I don't care if it's five minutes with the door shut in the bathroom. Spend time. Have a scripture book. We've got blue scripture sheets that are on the back table. You're welcome to take them. Read some scripture. Feed yourself. Because throughout the day, the Holy Spirit will bring back to remembrance those things that you have read. It says that in John. We want the Holy Spirit to speak to us and guide us through the day. But yet, if we don't have anything in there for him to remind us, 
That's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us, and to remind us of these things. We need to be reminded. So let's feed ourselves in the morning. Now, some of us got to run out without eating breakfast, so I understand why you don't want to sit and read your word, but let's make it a habit. Read, 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 and get some of those scriptures in your spirit. Psalms 1, verses 1 and 2. God blesses those people who refuse evil advice and won't follow sinners or join in at sneering at God. Instead, the law of the Lord makes them happy, and they think about it day and night. Amen. All right, next screen. All sheep have a tendency to congregate close to other members of a flock. They can become stressed when separated from other flock members. How many of you in here, you ever leave the church at some point, you can't come for a few weeks, and you're like, oh, you just got to be around other people. I had that happen to me when I was in Texas, and I was like, Lord, I'm just so comfortable. Do I really, really have to go to a different church? I just miss my family. Okay, and I started praying, Lord, show me, because I'm certainly not interested in church hopping until I find the one I'm liking. And he spoke to me, and he showed me which church to go to. And what a blessing. They, he even had an assistant pastor named Pastor Bob, and looked just like Pastor Bob. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit would show up, the man would say, hold steady. He and his wife haven't received a salary in years. Just reminded me so much of the purity of God and was a, was a friend to the people, interacted with them. It was just such a blessing. Really, really was a blessing to be there. Can't say enough about them. They were wonderful. So sheep can become stressed when separated from their flock members. So yes, I did need to be around some other Christians. That's biblical, folks. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Amen? During flocking, sheep have a strong tendency to follow a leader, and that leader may simply just be the first one to move. So if you get a bunch of sheep and goats together in the same place, and this can be really difficult for pastors, I'm sure. I've seen it. You get a lot of sheep and goats mixed up. You know how independent those goats are. And that goat decides, well, I'm going to go this way. Well, guess who's following him? The little sheep that want to flock. They want to flock behind him. So they're going to follow him wherever he goes. Oh, he's deciding he's going to go through the fence now. Let's go out in the street and get ran over by a car. You know, that's how they act. So there is a good reason to separate the goats from the sheep, or else they will lead them in a place they don't need to go. In sheep, position in a moving flock is highly correlated with social dominance. But there is no definitive study to show consistent voluntary leadership by an individual sheep. In other words, you're not going to have one sheep that says, okay, I'm the leader today, let's go. They're all together, and one sheep over here might start going this way, so they all go this way. Well, then this one over here says, well, let's go this way, so then they go this way. And they just kind of do that. They follow. They have the entire planet, and they're in one spot. The whole world to graze, and they're all right there. That can be a good thing because we stick together no matter what. We don't say, oh, you're the best of all of us. Woo, let's follow you wherever you go. And we simply have those who will lead at certain times. And it's okay. It's okay to give up your position and let someone else take the lead every so often. Hallelujah. You guys did a fantastic job. I cannot say enough for all of those who stepped up to the plate while I was gone for those three and a half months. I had nothing but good reports come back to me, and I was just so blessed. It's wonderful. Did a great job with praise and worship this morning, Rachel. Amen? Amen. Amen. Next screen. Sheep becomes stressed when isolated. This stress is reduced if they are provided with a mirror. They have proven this. It indicates, indicating that the sight of other sheep has stress-reducing properties. You guys can argue and fuss at your face. Hurry up! I gotta go! Turn off the light! Did you lock the door? Blah, 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 blah. The second you walk in the door, hi! I see you. I feel so much better I'm here. 
You know, it, there's something about being around other fellow believers. Restraint, isolation, loud noises, novel situations, pain, heat, extreme cold, and fatigue are among other stressors for sheep. Don't be so uh, weary in well-doing. You have to take care of this. How can we serve God if this vessel is not up to par? I deal with anemia. I have to take my iron every day. If I forget one day, you will see it on my face that night, which has happened more than I can tell you. It is what it is, but you have to take care of your body. All right? Just want to encourage you to do that. All right, the next screen. Bleeding may signal distress, frustration, or impatience. Isolation commonly prompts bleeding by sheep. Blah, I'm here by myself. Sheep are usually silent when they're in pain. Notice if there's someone in the church that just isn't as chipper as they used to be. Not as bleeding as they used to be. Blah. Go talk to them. Find out what's going on. Reach out to them because they're not going to reach out to you. They're usually silent when they're in pain. Their primary defense mechanism is to flee from danger when their flight zone is entered. They have a certain area of protection, and when someone comes into that area, they tend to go crazy and start running. Sheep can recognize, oh, I got a great example for that, sorry. Okay, we as Christians, we're walking down, you know, the, at the mall, and we have someone walk up to us who's got their hair like this, and they got it all green, and they got their, their you know, bars and studs and stuff. We as Christians, if we don't know how to handle that, we feel like we're going to be attacked at any moment, and we want to run. You're in my zone. Because there's some type of fear that's in the inside of us, like if I approach that person, they're going to chew my head off. I'm going to get shot. Can I tell you, you're not. They're some of the most approachable people on the face of this planet. Never judge a book. Amen. Remember the scripture I read earlier whenever it said, no matter how unimportant they seemed, we still reach out. No matter what this brain or pride or arrogance has to say. Sheep can recognize individual humans and ovine or other sheep faces and remember them for years. Never forget, in the next screen, according to biblical story of the binding of Isaac, a ram or a sheep is sacrificed as a substitute for Isaac after the angel stays Abraham's hand. This is a foreshadowing of our Jesus on our next screen. Christ is also portrayed as the sacrificial lamb of God. John 1, 29. The next day, John the Baptist, or John the Baptist, seeing Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. <clears throat> In Matthew 25, verse 40, it says, The king will answer, Whenever you do it for any of my people, no matter how important they seem, you did it for me. Laying down our lives for other people, sacrificially, is very important. When is the last time we sacrifice just to help someone? I'm not talking about some convenient meal you had extra that you were just going to take over there to help them. I mean sacrifice. It's, it's your dinner. You have nothing else to cook, and you know someone is in need, and you fast that night so you can feed someone else. That's sacrifice. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he left us an example of how to live by dying. Let that sink in. He left us an example of how to live by dying to our fleshly desires. We have to be so careful at times when we get involved in things, 
sin. As Christians, we are involved in sin because we think it's okay. Oh, no one's ever going to know. I've got this under control. No one's going to know. But God knows. God knows. And not only does God know, but if you're sinning with someone else, you better just beware because you're leading someone else in an ungodly situation as well. And you will be held accountable. And the Bible says it would be better for you if a milestone was wrapped around your neck and you dropped in the middle of the ocean to sink to the bottom floor than to lead someone astray. I say that as gently as I can. I don't know if anybody in here is doing anything outright sinful, but it's something that we need to be aware of. It's so important to live a dying life. It's not about me. It's not about what I want. 2 Corinthians 5.15, Christ died for all so that those who live would not continue to live for themselves. He died for them and was raised from the dead so that they would live for them, or for him, sorry. And again in Matthew 7, next screen, wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Woohoo! In my name, you know, we've cast out demons, and in your name we've done all these wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What's the matter? God has a bad memory, he don't remember me? Uh, no. Remember John 10, 27, my sheep know my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. It's a relationship. It's a bond, and no one will ever snatch you out of his hand when you have that relationship with him. Bible says it. You cannot be snatched. John 15, verses 18 through 19, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. This is Jesus speaking. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That's why the world hates you. Get used to being hated, folks. The day that we live in, get used to being hated. I don't want anybody to not like me. We've seen, there's a huge difference between sheep and goats. Say, I'm a sheep. I want to be more of a sheep. I want to follow him. I want to know his voice. I want to hear his voice. That's our desire, is to know him, to crave him, to want to be near him. There should always be a difference between us and non-believers as well. If we are doing things that remind others of the world, whether it's the way we talk, cursing, you know, you're all great, fine, wonderful up in here, and then we're going to go out there pumping gas, that, blah, 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 cursing at the pump, and Joe Blow, who visited your church two weeks ago, standing right there, and you have no idea. We need to not look like the world. We need to look like Christ. We don't have to go out there and say, I am a Christian, come to church with me. But we need to be examples, reaching out to people. Sacrificial love. Sacrificial love. We shouldn't act, speak, or think alike the world. We should always strive to be the light, to be different, to be a good example. I was so blessed. Met her for the first time, a friend of Miranda's. Her name is Sarah. I wish she was here today. Bubbly, just Wow, she reminds me so much of my sister-in-law. And I'm looking in the rearview mirror when she got in the car, and I'm like, is that my sister-in-law? She looks so much like her. And she was just amazing. And we're driving down the road, and it's raining outside, and one of our friends were on the side of the road. And we're like, oh, we got an extra umbrella. Let's give it to her because she's walking home. So I pull over, and that person's like, I'm not carrying the umbrella. I'm not carrying that. You know, they don't want to be seen with an umbrella. And Sarah's about the girl, what's wrong with you? It don't matter what nobody says. Just take the umbrella. You know, she was just so real. People look up to her. You know, she's, she's a good example 
of a teenage girl who knows who she is in God. She's a Christian, and she doesn't care what you say about her. She's beautiful, inside and out. That's how we should be. <clears throat> I have just a couple last-minute things. Another important distinction between the two is that sheep, like multitude, I'm sorry, that sheep like multitudes of sheep and goats like leading sheep astray. Sheep become stressed out when they're separated from their flocks. Ask yourself, does it bother you when you miss a service? Or are you satisfied just congregating once a month, once a week, just on holidays? It's very important for us to be influenced by other sheep. It's very important. Meat packers have an interesting nickname for goats. They'll train up an old goat, and they will name him Judas. And that, this goat is trained to lead the sheep to the slaughterhouse. Go to a slaughterhouse. They have a goat named Judas. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Okay, there's a song, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear, be careful little mouth what you speak. Just because you're in the same sheepfold, so to speak, with other sheep and goats, doesn't mean the one you're standing next to is a goat or a sheep. You have to use your ears, eyes, and your understanding spiritually, your sense of smell, your discernment to know, is this person a sheep or is this person a goat? What was that scripture about the fruit of the tree? You can judge a tree by their fruits. Just because they made a mistake doesn't mean, oh, you're a goat. I've got to get away from you. You're evil. You know? But if they're practicing sin, they're constantly complaining and they never stop. They're constantly gossiping and they never stop. They're constantly doing certain things. Get away from them. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's true. If you don't get away from him, you are liable to be following them right down a path you don't need to go down. <clears throat> if we want to be a sheep, we need to start acting like sheep and follow after the God, God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen? Sheep have good hearing because it's very, very important that sheep are good listeners. When someone comes up to you and they say, you know, I've got this problem in my life I'm really dealing with, I'm struggling. Put your cell phone down. Click the TV off. Sit right down beside them and say, tell me about it. And you listen. And as Pastor Bob says, sometimes that's all you got to do. And at the end of their talking about what they're going through, they feel, oh, I feel so much better. Thank you for listening. And then you say, now let me pray for you. And it's done. You don't have to have every answer in every book. You don't have to be this, oh, I'm this psychological experienced person where I can figure out everything they're going through. No. Can I tell you what the answer is every single time? Jesus. Any counseling session you have, it doesn't matter what. The answer is always Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I'm going through a divorce. Jesus. I'm struggling with addiction. Jesus. I'm confused. I don't know where God wants me to go. Jesus. It's always going to be Jesus. You always take them back to the cross because that's where it happened, folks. Always take them back to the cross every single time because if they get a glimpse of God, guess who they're going to be following? God. If they keep looking at you, all they're doing is following you. you got to keep them focused on God. It's about your relationship with him. I want to encourage every person in here. You might feel like a goat today. You've been jumping through the fence, riding yourself out through the Mary go field out there thinking it's all fun and games and you just want to make a decision to get back up in that fence and say you know I think I'm gonna be a sheep I don't like it out here anymore this is a time where you come forward and we pray for you and we just let God do the work amen y'all encouraged today 
You think you'll learn something new about goats and sheep? So when it comes time for that separating and the judgment, that final judgment, let's know that we know that we know that we know his voice in him because then we're going to know that we know without a shadow of a doubt where we're going. Amen? Amen. Amen.